Zombie Research Society is a collection of academics and enthusiasts who are interested in studying zombies as if they're a scientific reality. So we don't make anything up. We don't say that there was a zombie outbreak last week at a Walmart in Iowa or something like that. We all know that didn't happen. What we do say is, we ask the question, if zombies were actually show up at your front door, what would they look like? What would they smell like? How would they hunt you? you know, how would their brain work? And, from, and so we do serious academic study of it, and then from there we try to extrapolate survival strategies so that when it actually happens, we have a chance of, of making it through. Well, for me, I've always been obsessed with zombies, and I, I kind of come to it from the film side, so um, I, I got a master's degree from NYU Film School, and I actually studied zombies. I did my master's thesis on zombies, so I, I definitely have a you know, strong film background in zombie movies, but I realized at one point that I've never been as scared watching any zombie movie as I thought I would be in a real zombie outbreak. It's, it's like the movies were fun, and I love them, but I felt like they were never really giving me the full picture of what it would be like, so that's, for me, that's how it started is, I was like, okay, I really want to know what this thing I'm afraid of will actually be like, and and it just started with me. You know, if I wanted to know if zombies needed to blink, I would call up the head of the National Academy of Ophthalmology and ask her. And so, some people would laugh and you know make them smile, but across the board, pretty much everyone was willing to help me. And uh, that's kind of how you know the advisory board was built. And I've got you know Harvard uh, Medical School professor on there and a couple leading neuroscientists, and and they just you know I called them up one day, and it turned out they were really into zombies too. So uh, it's kind of grown from there. Well, you know, first of all, again, it's, it's all theory, right? Anybody that tells you they know exactly what a zombie's going to be like and, and exactly how to survive uh, is doomed to be wrong. We don't have a zombie that we can dissect, and, you know, there's no historically recorded zombie outbreak. So uh, they're doomed to be wrong, and, you know, if you follow their advice, you're probably going to get eaten along with them. But we do have working theories about, you know, zombie brain function. We've got a couple neuroscientists on our board who've built a 3D model of the zombie brain. So by observing zombie behavior, they've been able to identify what parts of the brain are working and what parts aren't, which then of course helps with how you kill a zombie, right? Because you need to know what parts of the brain are working to figure out what parts of the brain need to destroy. Um, to a, one of our board members is a, is a professor of international politics at Tufts University, and he wrote a book called uh, Theories of International Politics and Zombies. And so it's a serious academic study of how different governments would deal with a zombie outbreak. So that's like exactly the kind of stuff we try to do. Well, I mean, the great thing about it is that even, I mean, it's fun, right? We're not the Cardboard Research Society. I mean, there's a reason why we're interested in zombies in the first place. Um, granted, the more research I do on them, the more I get afraid of them, because it seems like there are a lot of diseases out there that are mutating in, in ways that are starting to look like zombieism. But essentially, it's fun, right? I love the movies. I love the culture. So, you know, if people laugh or smile, it's great. I mean, you, you should never take yourself too seriously about anything. And, you know, I, ultimately, it doesn't really bother me if I'm not taken seriously. I just want to survive. <laughs> We've got about 12 people on the advisory board, and it rotates a bit. There are some members that have been on there for several years, and then there are some that are sort of come on, and then other ones you know want to join. And we kind of kind of try to keep it around 12. So it's it's a bit of a rotating board, and uh, you know it's great. We've got George Romero's on the board, who's the you know the original director of Night of Living Dead. So it's it's a really great board. Uh, I'm excited about that for sure. Well, I think that there are a lot of theories about why zombies are so popular right now, and and a couple things that I think are really strong influencers are uh, the fact that we have a better understanding of infectious disease and microbiology now than we ever have before. The, the average guy walking down the street understands about you know sexually transmitted diseases and swine flu and bird flu and SARS and anthrax, right? So. Zombies are essentially a virus with legs and teeth, right? It's a virus that gets up and starts walking around and trying to spread itself. So it really fits in our model of disease and our concern about disease. Secondly, zombies are synonymous with the end of the world, right? So you, you don't, um, like vampires, you don't have a, like one zombie that goes to your high school or like a zombie that lives on the edge of town and only eats a couple people every week or something so that no one catches them. You know, if you see one zombie, you see 10 zombies, you see 10 million zombies. I mean, that's the way it works, right? Again, like a virus. So the aftermath of a zombie outbreak looks a lot like the aftermath of any other m huge uh, natural or man-made disaster. So when we see these disasters on the news, a giant earthquake in Chile, or you know the tsunami in Japan, uh, it kind of looks like a zombie outbreak in its aftermath. Secondly, you know, again, the end of the world. We're worried about global warming. We're worried about economic disaster. We're worried about huge terrorist attacks and you know rogue nations. And all of this stuff really fits well in with the zombie, and more more so than any other monster. Yeah, I mean, Ma I think Max Brooks is you know his stuff's great. I think when when Zombie Survivor came, Guide came out in 2003, it was it was really great. 
groundbreaking. I mean, it was amazing. He did a great thing. He actually wrote the foreword on my book, Everything You Ever Want to Know About Zombies, and we're both from L.A., so, so he's a friend of mine. Um, but yeah, I think it's great. I, I think that there is a little bit of a controversy brewing because he's firmly in the camp of liking slow zombies, and you know, there's this new trend of fast zombies, and I, I recently saw a behind-the-scenes clip of World War Z being shot uh, in Europe with Brad Pitt, and they're using the fast zombies. So, I haven't talked to Max about it yet, but the rumor is that he's pretty upset because, you know, they sort of changed his, his book around to turn it into these fast sprinting zombies. Yeah, I mean, I think the video games are great, and actually George Romero credits the video games, not the movies, with bringing zombies back into popularity. Um, with, you know, uh, 1995, uh, Resident Evil, the first Resident Evil came out, it, it changed the face of, of horror gaming, and arguably gaming in general, right? I mean, it was really that first, like, survival game where you just don't get unlimited bullets, and you, you know, you have to actually find medicine to cure yourself, and, you, you know, and so... Uh, it, it really, and it was scary, but really scary. So it really changed the face of gaming, and I think that you know Romero has said uh, repeatedly that he thinks that that is kind of what has brought zo zombies back into popularity. Um, I think it's interesting that um, if you look at something like the original Resident Evil, where the graphics were amazing for the time, amazing, but but. Uh, they didn't have the technology to make these large open worlds. So what they did was they did very small rooms. You were inside a building and you sort of went from one room to another and they gave the impression that the entire city was overrun with zombies, but really it was just you and a couple of zombies because of the technology. That kind of mirrors Night of the Living Dead, very low budget movie where they they simulated a big zombie outbreak by just using one farmhouse and just a handful of zombies attacking a farmhouse, right? And then you look at the next evolution in zombies in film and video games, you go to Dawn of the Dead, right? Bigger budget, in a mall, we can use more zombies, and then you go to, uh, oh, what's the, what's the video game? Uh, uh, dead, and then you go to Dead Rising, right? Dead Rising, in a mall, more zombies, better technology, we can create more zombies. Then you go, right, to something like uh, Land of the Dead or Zombie Land, where we, you know, in the movies where we got a bigger budget and we're just gonna, the whole world, look, the whole world, the president's getting eaten, whoever, right? Same thing with the video games. You go to Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead, right? Whole world, let's go explore the world, tons of zombies, plus fast zombies, right? Uh, in keeping with the new trend in movies, fast zombies. So I think that they've mirrored each other a lot, and, and it's, uh, that's pretty interesting. I think that the clash is that zombies have always been rooted in, unlike almost every other monster, and again, this is another reason they're, they're popular, zombies have always been rooted in, in biology, right? They're not, uh, they, they're not based on some ancient superstition or myth. So it's, it's li quite literally a corpse that stands back up and has the limited ability of a rotting corpse, starts walking around and trying to eat people. So once you start making them sprint, you're almost getting in the realm of fantasy. And I think a lot of people that really get into zombies, there's a disconnect there. You know? So you never try to scientifically explain you know, how a, a vampire can turn into a bat or you know, how it can go to your high school and steal your girlfriend or something like that, right? Or why it sparkles in the sunlight. Um, <laughs> But you know you don't, you don't try to explain that stuff. Whereas zombies have all and that, zombies have always been sort of more biological and grounded in reality in that way. So when you start making corpses really fast, sprinting corpses, it, it, it rings untrue to zombie purists. Now there is a new trend though in in zombies that is the living zombie. So 28 days later, right? No, no purists really complained about that because they're alive. So it makes biological sense. They're living people infected with a rage virus that causes them to act just like zombies and spread their sickness just like zombies, but they're not really dead. So sure, they can run. Zombieland's another example of that. Um, in Zombieland, although most people don't realize this, the zombies are alive. They, the, they're not, they don't die and come back as zombies. It's literally just an infection. So, um, so yeah, I mean, on a functional level, I feel like if there's a bloodthirsty ghoul that's trying, you know, clawing down my door trying to eat me, I'm not really interested in having an intellectual debate about whether or not it's it's truly a zombie because it's undead or it's not really a zombie because it's alive. If 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 its ultimate goal is to eat me and turn me into one of it, it's zombie enough for me, right? And so there you go. Yeah, yeah, we we have been brought into consulting a few movies, and actually one really interesting thing is that one of our board members, Stephen Schlossman, who wrote uh, the zombie, zombie Autopsies, which is a, he's the Harvard doctor, and he wrote a, a novel about doctors trying to investigate the zombie sickness after the world has fallen to this plague, 
uh, George Romero just optioned it and it's going to be his next zombie movie. So that's cool because it's kind of both, they're both on, in Zombie Research Society and it's going to kind of be the first all Zombie Research Society movie. So I'm excited about that, yeah. Uh, well, on a, on, a, on a macro level, if the zombie apocalypse happens, and I've talked to dozens of experts from former heads of, of uh, the National Security Council under several different presidents to senior executives at Homeland Security to public health disaster specialists who say, we will totally screw up our response. The response will be, will be poor and inept and will not help the situation, will actually make the situation worse. So we got that going for us. On a personal level, on a personal level, uh, in a zombie outbreak, the first thing you want to remember is w there's a lot we don't know what, what zombies are going to be like until they come. But one thing we can all agree on is that people make zombies, right? That's, the key, that's a key ingredient. So stay away from people. Whatever your zombie survival plan is, look at it. And if it involves going to places where other people are going to be congregating, do not do it. Bad idea, right? Go somewhere else. Do the thing that no one else is going to do. That's key. Number one thing to stay alive, stay away from people. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know what the future of Zombie Research Society is. That's a good question. Everything so far has grown pretty organically. There hasn't really been a plan about it, and and I kind of like that. I mean, obviously, it's at a certain point, it's good to build a foundation and get a plan and things like that. But um, so far, it's just sort of going going along um, and, and growing organically, and, and we're just having fun with it. So. Yeah, if you want to find out more about the site, um, you can go to zombieresearch.org. It's, it's our, our website, and it's got all our information on there and contact information. And, and also our blog is on there, and, and you know we, we update at least five times a week with new research articles and different things about zombies and pop culture, and so it's, you know.